Well, I'm joined by Auckland Chamber of Commerce Chief Executive Simon Bridges. Simon, thanks so much for coming in. Afternoon. Better to be in Auckland than Wellington today. Feels so, good? So much better. So much better to be a commentator than a participant. <laughs> good to have you here. Thanks so much for joining us. First off, what's in this budget for business? Uh, you know, I think if you look at it, it's an election year budget. It's not the back to basics sort of budget that had been billed as, and I think that business was expecting. So what you've got is goodies, um, uh, welfare for households. I'm not necessarily knocking that, actually. In an SME survey we did, it was quite clear they did think health, education, cost of living issues were, were really important and required um, funding. I think the worry about that though is that that will fuel uh, interest rates and inflation, that will keep them higher uh, for longer. That would be a worry for business. From a business perspective, in a pure sense, I'm not sure that there's a lot there for your average small, medium size or even bigger business. Yeah, on your point there about higher interest rates, mm. if this higher inflation for longer mm. does flow through to more reserve bank action and higher interest rates at a high level uh, and also there for longer, how much would that hurt businesses? Can you give me anecdotally some evidence of just how much they're struggling at the moment and how difficult high rates would be? Well, it hurts because it already hurts, right? I mean, I think if you take the mentality of a smaller or medium business right now, say in Auckland, it's a situation where, look, they've got through COVID, they survived that, then they've had minimum wage high then they've had flood, cyclone. They're kind of sitting there saying, what else is going to be thrown in us? And so from that perspective, if you look at this budget, look, as I say, from a household perspective, there may be quite a bit there for you. From a business perspective, and not so much. And interest rates and inflation staying longer, that's a, that's a real worry indeed. Now, based on your survey that you released just yesterday, actually, mm. business owners said that they did want to see top priorities, mm. delivery on core services and economic resilience. Yeah. Has the balance been struck correctly between those? I'm not sure that it has from a business perspective. I think that first part is there, that sort of focus on delivery of core services. You can see, as I say, some goodies in that regard, whether it's public transport, whether it's prescriptions, um, uh, all the like there. But on the other side of the ledger, not there. I think what also came through in our survey was a sense, you know, really underlying the survey, we want to see a more productive economy uh, where businesses are out there and able to do more. And, and again, I don't know that much of that long-term picture is there. There's some good stuff. There's a tax incentive for gaming. That's fantastic. We've been calling for that. That's absolutely right. That that will result in a billion-dollar sector, and that's, that's, as I say, great. On the other side of it, though, you see tax increase around trust. That will affect a number of small, medium-sized businesses where that's their kind of their, their nest. Well, I think the other picture point here is around infrastructure, where what we see is, yes, some spending, but when you take into account the fact that much of it's going to be on rebuild, and rightly so, much of it's going to be on public transport uh, investment, how much is there actually left for genuine improvements of our big long-term issues? When Grant Robertson himself has said, we have a, a major infrastructure deficit in this country. But a lot of those repairs are needed to reconnect businesses Absolutely. with their customers, correct? So surely Absolutely. they would have been pleased to hear all of those rebuild costs coming out today. Totally right. It's, it's good. It's necessary. I suppose the point is for a higher wage productive economy, is it su sufficient? And that's the question. Look, I think it's an election year budget. There's some goodies there for households. Was there much there to turn the dial in a longer term sense? Not so sure. Speaking of turning the dial though, businesses obviously do want to see investment in skills and education. Yeah, you they got that today. What do you think yeah. their reaction to that education spend will be? Oh, really good. Uh, I mean, of course, if you think about infrastructure, for example, truck drivers, um, uh, you, you know, the people who are going to do the concreting and so on, um, that is a big task. Having them trained up and ready to go is amazing. Uh, the truth is, uh, on that though, we've got big capacity issues. We need tens of thousands of people. Uh, I'm not exactly sure at this time where they're coming from. Public transport, some of that's going to be subsidised, more so for, for younger yep. people. Uh, but there will be a pay rise there for bus, bus drivers yeah. too. More yeah. people will probably turn up to work on time. That would be good for business Yeah, owners. I think all of that is good. You know, I think there's a bunch of things there that, you know, mum and dad in West Auckland, South Auckland, uh, Hawke's Bay are going to say, you know, this is, is right. Um, I, I still say, though, you know, in terms of a business budget, was this a budget for business? No, I don't think we can say that. We've spoken about the economy a bit, and this was something that was, you know, very, very heavily spoken about in the lead up to this, whether or not this budget will balance short-term needs versus long-term investment. You've basically said you're disappointed on the long-term investment on infrastructure side, but net-net, where do you think this stacks up on that balance for both Look, of those? I think it probably achieves what Grant Robertson and Chris Hipkins are trying to do here in terms of getting households to say, yeah, you know what, there's something here for me and that's going to help. Um, I don't think it was a move to the right, I think it's probably a Labour Party election year budget. 
On infrastructure, Grant Robertson wants to build it. He says we can fix it, but businesses and their workers have to do that. Can they? Do they have the skills and capacity to do it? Um, that's a real worry. You know, it's, it's thousands, tens of thousands of people who are trained up and ready to go that are required. They're not there right at the moment. I think the other major question mark that and the numbers are going to have to be dug into is um, by the time you've invested in rebuilding in Napier and uh, Gisborne and, and Auckland uh, after floods and cyclone, by the time you've paid those public transport subsidies, which only ever go one way and that's up, how much is genuinely left for the long-term infrastructure job that we need to do in New Zealand? Are the things that the Labor government spoken of, uh, Auckland Light Rail, a Waitamata Harbour Crossing, I'm not sure we see funding for those. No recession. Positive news. It's good news, um, you know, and uh, I think, you know, that um, it definitely makes a difference. I think that's the reality for a lot of businesses. You know, they are making money, uh, but they're a bit grumpy because they've got this interest rate, uh, this inflation pressure, their, their costs and their profitability are really affected by that. But the reality is we are an economy where right now, for the most part, if you want a job, you've got one. It is a pretty slowing economy though. Things are certainly tough out there for yeah. everyone, especially for business owners, with those inflated costs at the moment. Do you think they might see that key economic projection from Treasury and say, well, you might not think that we're heading for a recession, but we certainly feel like we are? There's no doubt, and economists speak about this, with the reading, I think, Paul Krugman today in the Australian Financial Review talking about there's a big difference between sentiment and sometimes what the economic numbers say. Now, the sentiment's not wrong, actually. I've given you a raft of reasons why businesses are pretty grumpy about uh, things. You know, they still may be making money, they've still got their head above uh, water, but let's not pretend it's easy. Um, no, actually, it's, it's pretty tough. Crime, a really big problem for business owners, especially in Auckland. Ram raids are massive. Was there anything in this budget for them? It looks like investment's gone up. I, mean, I think the point I would make, and I've made around you know, some horrific violence we've seen uh, in the city over the last few days, is that it is a funding question. That does, I think, and I hope mean more, if I can put it this way, Bobby's on the beat, more of a presence, we want that. But what's also true is the po uh, is, and as important as the policies that they follow. So I think what we want to see is not only the police presence, we want to see them taking a stronger line. If you take Auckland, for example, our city centre has some real issues um, and if we want a strong commercial centre here it needs to be safe and perceived as such. Now you wore blue today so I feel like I'm allowed to ask you some political questions. I always wear blue, don't read anything into it. Once a net leader, always a net leader, <laughs> right Simon? How no can problem. the Nats argue with this one given that it is targeted support for children for parents? Yeah, I don't know they necessarily argue with those specific measures. I think what they're doing, we can see just from the speech we saw from Chris Luxon, is attacking it on the basis that it, it wasn't what it said on the tin. I mean, Nicola Willis talked about the gaslighting effect in terms of, you know, um, the government saying this was a budget around restraint, bread and butter, where actually it's been a bit more than that. I think this is the kind of budget where people read into it what they want. If you're on the left, you'll say, fantastic, there's investment in the things you want to see. If you're on the right, you'll say, fantastic, from political perspective at least, it hasn't shown the restraint uh, w we think was required. So it's a, a bit in the eye of the beholder I suppose. One word to sum it up? Um, election year budget, that's three words, sorry. <laughs> that is three, I'm glad you can't count. Simon Bridges, thank you so much thank for joining so much. us. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel to stay up to date with all the latest news from the New Zealand Herald. Click the subscribe button below or check out one of the videos here and head over to nzherald.co.nz for more details on these stories and more.